about to witness the longest, toughest, and most gruesome project I've ever done, building this RC solar rover. So it all started a few months ago when I thought to myself, what if there was a way to make RC cars run forever? After all, a longer runtime equals more fun, right? So I got to work researching how to make this a reality, and I found this cool autonomous solar rover made by RC Test Flight. It was a really cool concept, but I wanted to make one that actually looked like an RC car and had crawling capabilities, which inspired me to embark on the challenge of building a solar-powered RC crawler design with infinite runtime. My plan was to start with a basic crawler chassis and then incorporate the solar model modules onto the car afterward. Since everything will be modular, this will make the whole crawler easy to assemble and allow me to make quick modifications if needed. After a few weeks of more research and waiting for the parts to arrive, it's time to assemble the pieces. Here is everything I used for this build. If you want to check them out, I linked all these products in the description down below. First, I oiled all the bearings and greased all the gears in the chassis. As I was building the chassis, I came across my first problem. Since I ordered such a big motor for pulling the added weight of the solar modules, the servo didn't have enough room to fit in front of it on the chassis. So I quickly catted a super sketchy chassis extension thingy to fit the servo. It is definitely not very stable, but it'll have to do for now. After oiling the shocks and finishing up the chassis assembly, I connected all the electronics to make sure that the crawler worked well by itself. Only then would we be able to add the heavy solar modules on the crawler. After some struggling to program the ESC, it was finally ready for the first test of the crawler's capabilities. So yeah, it worked. A really cool feature of this chassis is that it can shift gears, which is useful for this build because I might have to run it in low gear to prevent the motor from overheating if the crawler ends up being really heavy. Now the next part is to add the MPPT solar controller and secure the electronics on the crawler. To do this, I 3D printed some platforms and screwed them onto the chassis. I chose these flexible waterproof solar panels for car camping. The advantage of using these flexible solar cells is that it is less likely to break if the car flips over and that it is more durable in raining conditions because it's waterproof. I wired two panels in series and then connected three sets of these in parallel. According to the specs, this configuration should output enough current to sustain the crawler on a normal sunny day. However, I'm still a little worried that these panels are going to be way less efficient than the conventional monocrystalline glass panels. In order to mount these solar panels, I cut up a board and coated it in white protective coating. This will prevent water from seeping into the wood. The white color also reduces the heat of the wooden board, making the solar panel operate more efficiently. So with all the parts finished, it's time for the first test. Alright, so we have the car over here and we're basically gonna run laps on this field. Alright, so I'm gonna be using those goal, goal posts as landmarks. I'm gonna try to drive as straight as possible in like a rectangular shape. And then every time it passes here, it counts as one lap. And we're gonna see if, how many laps it drives. I just replaced this uh, little platform with the upgraded version. The purple one broke at the joints here, so I printed a stronger one. Everything else is the same. I removed the MPPT controller, did some uh, cable management, put the receiver antenna on a post with a zip tie. Alright, so for the first test, we'll be just driving the car itself with no solar panel whatsoever, just to get a base uh, 
to see how what is the range of this car out of the box the battery is fully charged right now i can just put the mppt just as a voltage sensor it should be 12.2 volts right here so it's reading 12.1 but it should be a hundred percent charged so I'm going to be running this car until this reads 11.4 volts, which is when the battery is about 40% capacity. And for all the other tests, I will also run it until it hits 11.4. So we get a controlled variable here. All right, so let's do this. A few laps in, the car got really sluggish and started veering off course. So I plugged in the MPPT controller to see if it was running out of battery. The battery actually had plenty of power left. It's just that a screw fell off the servo, which explained why I couldn't steer the crawler. I wasn't about to take it home to fix it and then come back and do the test all over again in this 100 degree weather. So I did some super sketchy tape work. This seemed to be holding up. Just look at the amount of bugs that got caught in this. Just got caught by the tape here. That's crazy. There's like a caterpillar. <laughs> so the motor is warm, but it's definitely not hot or anything. So I don't think it's overheating that much. The tape actually held on really well for six laps. So that's really surprising. And then the fan is definitely just loose now because I just mounted it with one screw and then it, it, it just kind of got loose from all the shaking. Alright, so it has been 7 laps. Let's see what the voltage is. Perfectly 11.4 volts. So it takes 7 laps for this car to go from 100% capacity to 40%. Now that we got a baseline for this crawler's performance, it's time to add the solar modules one at a time. For our second test, we need to test the efficiency of the MPPT controller. This is uh, day two. I mounted the MPPT controller, so we're gonna test it out with the controller on the car to see if there's any difference to the amount that it goes. Instead of the battery being connected directly to the ESC like the last test, the battery is connected to the MPPT controller. This feeds the current from the battery through the MPPT and out to the ESC. The only difference is just that I added the MPPT charge controller and then we'll be running the battery through the battery port and then connecting the ESC to the load port so that the current is flowing through the circuit in the MPPT and then out through the low port to the ESC. So this will definitely make the car run for a shorter amount of time because first there's some energy loss because now that the current is flowing through a circuit instead of just flowing straight from the battery to the ESC. And also because there's more, more weight on the car since the MPVT is mounted. And just for a reference, the MPVT is probably just as heavy as the battery. So it is a pretty substantial amount of weight. Okay, Bruh. so apparently I didn't charge the battery before I came out here, so. All right, so basically I can't really test it with the ESC attached to MPVT because I already set the discharge stop at 11.4 volts, so it won't turn on the ESC, but I'm just gonna 
connect this straight with the ESC like last time but now just with the added weight I just want to see if the speed is any slower so the car didn't go that much slower at all and I came back later that day to do the test with a fresh battery and it ran for six and a half laps which is almost the same as before doesn't feel like it's going any slower which is a good sign that means the motor is not handling too much weight or anything with the second test complete it's finally time to add the solar panels but this video is getting a bit long so i'm gonna end this right here and do a part two where i show you guys the rest of the build i definitely have a lot of fun things planned for this crawler in the future like hooking it up to an FPV system, doing long distance missions, and so much more. If you want to support the channel and make these videos a reality, please subscribe or support me on Patreon. And as always, thank you for watching.